Good evening ladies and gentlemen, how are we getting on? In today's video we are going to take a deep dive look at everything you need to know about expeditions from one end to the other. So, without too much further ado, let's jump into this one. Okay, so a couple of quick things to get out of the way before we jump into this otherwise rather chunky video. So first up, this is going to be a goal to show you everything you need to know, rather than everything there is to know. Because key point is that Expeditions has a lot of uh, variation in it. So missions can have different objectives, those objectives can be in different locations each time you run them, in order to keep it a bit fresher. But for obvious reasons, that means I can't show you absolutely everything. What I'm going to try and do today is cover all the important stuff so you have the information you need to be able to get a solid start and make a good crack at it. So, let's jump forward into this thing. Okay, so first up, I'm on one of my baby characters so you can get a first look at this thing. And here is the map. So this is where the first big change is. You can see we've got a new icon up at the top there. It's the Expedition's icon. So we've got a little um, key indicator next to that, that's for the hotkey that will open that particular window. It's R on PC, but obviously it'll be something different on a controller. So opening that up, we have the Expeditions window, getting slightly cluttered on the old UI here, but uh, it's manageable. So we've got in the middle there a little bit of information about what we need to do on the daily side of things in order to kick off an expedition. For right now, we've got to go right at the beginning and see this Orlando individual at the White Spring. So we also have an indicator for how much ultrasite battery ch cell charge we have here, which is the resource we need to gather by doing refuge dailies in order to launch expeditions. You need that to be at 100% in order to launch an expedition, which amounts to doing one per day, or launching one per day. You can join more than that. So the Start Expeditions button opens up this window here, and you can see we have two missions available. You can pick either one if you have a full ultrasite charge, which we don't right now, so we'll be coming back to this bit, but... There they are, two different options that you can choose either one, whenever you like. Doesn't particularly matter which one you do. We also have the Travel to the White Springs option, which will take us directly to the White Spring and inside the refuge. You can still travel there the old-fashioned way if you'd like, but this will take us directly inside. There's also one of these for the Rusty Pick as well, which is quite cool. The White Springs decor is refined and decadent. Don't listen to any naysayers. Here we go, we're in the refuge. So the inside of the White Springs has been changed a little bit now. Obviously we arrive and we see the White Springs greeter robot here, who is uh, clearly an unhappy chap. But if you have a look down those doors there, that will take us out of this instanced area and into the White Springs Mall, which is basically the same as it always was, all the robots down there, except it's now a separately instanced area. Here we have the greeter bot, who will give us a little bit of information, including pointing us towards the person we need to see. That would be the enigmatic Orlando. They oversee the White Spring and are allowing the responders to stay here, as well as their constituents. Okay, so our happy friend here is pointing us towards Orlando. And we can see from the pip up there that uh, Orlando is just up the stairs here. So let's go and have a chat with them. Well, hello, darling. A pleasure to meet another guest of our fine establishment. I am Orlando, your host and management liaison. Ah, perhaps you have not heard. The White Spring is now home to the Refuge, a place of safety and care for all in need. The Refuge is being run by the responders, individuals committed to the well-being of their fellows. So as you see, Orlando is going to give us a little bit more information about what's going on here and uh, will point us on in the direction of the people we need to help. For those of you who are wondering how the refuge works with certain other factions who are present at the White Springs, Orlando has a bit more information on that front, so if you want to find out about that, this is the person you need to talk to. ...to full working order and are using it to make contact with more distant settlements. Their contacts in the pit are in something of a desperate situation, it seems, against a dangerous enemy. Now, darling, before anybody bundles you off, the first thing you should do is introduce yourself to some of the responders. I just so happen to know a few in need of more local assistance, and helping them will earn you the other thing you'll need. That other thing, of course, being the ultracite battery cells, which fuel the vertebrate. Ultra cells, if you prefer. Our lovely Ms. Rucker is the closest thing to a leader the refuge has. Though I believe she's less than comfortable with the title. The darling chef, Ms. Rousseau, needs some assistance in the kitchen, I hear. And Ms. Wagner, over in the common area, is looking for donations. 
I'm sure your generosity will be well rewarded. When you are I finished with each that. of them, I well, recommend you speak with Mr. Saint. Skippy Rorich, the Pit suffer. Union representative. I imagine he'll want to discuss the situation in the pit with you before oh you God, embark. Okay, so Orlando has pointed us in the direction of a bunch of people we need to speak to. You can see all of the uh, quests popping up on the side there. Basically, Orlando has pointed us towards the characters who are involved in the Refuge dailies. So these are daily quests that have been added that focus solely on the Refuge here, in addition to every other daily that's out there. And these will get us the ultrasight charge that we need in order to launch an expedition and power the Vertibird. So this is introducing that system, and first up we have to go and meet the individuals involved, and start off those dailies for them. So first up, we're going to head off and talk to Sophie Wagner. She is an easy place to start. Okay, so here we go. Here's Sophie, and she will be one of the easier refuge dailies to complete. So we've got three refuge dailies here. Uh, two of those will be the same every time you do one. One of the refuge dailies will change uh, depending on the day. They'll alternate. In here we can see Giuseppe's store, which is where we'll be buying some of the rewards once we've completed a few expeditions. So let's talk to Sophie and see what she needs. Well, hello there, stranger. Pleased to meet you. I'm Sophie, Sophie Wagner. It might surprise you to know an operation like this is always churning through supplies. We work hard to keep things in stock, and that funny Orlando character does their best to help out as well, but... Yeah, we still have shortfalls. So here I am, asking generous folks such as yourself to help us fill in those gaps and keep the refuge running. So there we go. So top option would give us uh, what exactly Sophie needs. And there's a whole load more if you want a bit of extra information about Sophie and what she does. I believe how fast we've been going through our stash of steel scrap. It's been nuts. 50 units if you have it would go a long way. So there we go. 50 units of steel. And the actual resource will vary from day to day, but uh, it's always 50 units of whatever it is. So make sure you stay stocked up. But don't worry if you haven't got that on your person, why would you? There's plenty of options to make it nice and easy to grab what you need. Specifically, right next to Sophie here is a stash box and a scrap box. So if you have the ingredients necessary in stock already, you can just grab those and then turn them in. We could always use an extra hand so let's grab 50 steel. I think I'll have to stock up a little bit once uh, Expeditions goes live. And now we can go and turn that in. Glad to see you've returned. Are you ready to donate? Nice and easy. You do? Amazing. Thank you so much. This is going to be a big help. It just so happens I got a little something for you as a reward for your generosity. And there we go. Rucker set aside some ultrasite battery cells I can spare you from the ones the White Spring management doles out. Fancy a vertebrate trip? They're not much use for anything else, but I got a feeling you're going to need them. So there we go. Having completed that one, Sophie's going to give us 25% of the ultrasite charge we need. So for the other 75%, we've got two more missions to do. We'll go and have a look at the other mission that will be there every day. So this one will stay the same as well. And that involves coming through here to speak to Chef Esme at Esme's Kitchen. Bonjour. My name is Esme Rousseau. But most people around here know me as Chef Esme. We had some representatives from Foundation and Crater come here seeking assistance with the recent influx of refugees. I thought that we could help them out by providing some food for their people. I've started a pot of venison and tato stew, one of my newest creations. Would you be able to help me finish it? Okay, so she needs a little help cooking, and it's uh, fairly quick and easy, this one. How wonderful! I can't wait to whip up something delicious for everyone! The stew requires tatoes, venison, salt, black pepper, and carrots. The ingredients can be found in our storage area. Your job is to grab the ingredients and put them in before the stew burns. Super! Let's have you start by stirring the stew, which will help keep it from burning. Remember to continuously stir during the cooking process. Okay, first things first, we need to stir the stew, so we need to activate the ladle for this one, not the pot. So, bear in mind, it's a little awkward, it's not a big target, that one. 
And there we go, that adds a little extra time to the timer on the recipe for success sort of tooltip on the right there. You're looking for carrots, potatoes, and the pièce de résistance, the venison. So there we go, we need to grab some ingredients. Carrots, potatoes, and venison. Now, some of this will be in this back room here. We have a whole bunch on store. So, there's the basket of potatoes. These things do move around a bit, but uh, this is one of the two locations they'll be in. There's the carrots over there. Hey, yeah, found them now. <laughs> and the last one, the venison, is going to be on the shelves in the storage area. So if we head down this back corridor... And there it is, right there on the shelf. It can be anywhere in this space, anywhere on these shelves. So uh, always uh, a little bit of hunting around needed. We got lucky here today. So up next, we'll stir the stew again, add a little bit more to the timer. Not that we really need to, but we might as well. And now we need to prepare the ingredients we've just grabbed. So we need to pan on the venison. And we need to chop the carrots. Nice and easy. And we need to wash some potatoes. Sorted. And after that, we need to do drop them in the stew. Completely honest, I'm not sure how that much ingredients are going to fit in that small pot, but anyway. So salt and pepper, we're going to head back into the storage room. We found some pepper on the shelf here. Keep your eyes open when you run through here the first time. You might so spot the salt and pepper as well. So uh, it can save you a little bit of hunting around if you spot it the first time around. If not, it'll be somewhere on the shelves. Here we go, we got the salt as well. Okay, there we go. So, last thing she needs us to do is add a special ingredient. It is time to add your own special touch. So we can add either a stem pack, some spices, or some psycho, depending on which uh, additional bonus we'd like the stew to have. In my case, all I've got is stem packs, so that's what we're going to go with. A restorative element? How inspired! Here is your finished stew. Now. It is time to feed some of the hungry. I believe you can find the raider and settler representatives in the bar area. You must make a choice, since there is not enough to feed everyone, I'm afraid. I'll do my best to gather more ingredients so that we can cook again another time. Okay, so the final thing we need to do is find the raider and settler representatives and give some excess food to them. So, both of those are hanging out in the bar here. We've got the raider over there and the settler on this side. Whichever group you turn it into, assuming you haven't maxed out that group's reputation already from Wastelanders, then you will get additional reputation with that group. As we'll see in a moment, because I'm on a baby character. Personally, I detest the raider, so uh, I'm going to go for the settlers. We've got people going hungry, and too many mouths to feed at Foundation. So this is a place that's bringing all your so There we go, we'll turn that in. Some good soup. The people of Foundation will be both healthy and happy tonight, all thanks to you. And there we go. Because this character has absolutely no rep with either group, we actually get quite a sizable chunk. So there we go, that one's completed, and now we're going to get a whole bunch of stuff in rewards, including some venison and potato stew. The restorative one this time, because <laughs> that's the ingredient we put in, the stim pack. So there you go, as you can see, it basically works sort of like stim pack, but with some food. <laughs> okay, so last but not least. We need to go and talk to Rucker. So there are two refuge dailies that are uh, alternating. One of them, Code Blue here, involves talking to Rucker, and we'll have a look at the other one in just a moment. Well, seems like timing is one of your strong suits. Look, I can stitch up a gash with the best of them. But Appalachia, well, she can do a lot worse than cut us open. Got a lot of folks here with sickness we don't understand, and injuries we don't know how to treat. So, that's the deal. You bring back medical information that'll help me figure out how to help these folks, and I'll get you all the juice you need. Okay, so if we complete this one, she'll give us another 50% charge that we need. So the larger daily will give you 50% of the charge, whereas the two smaller ones that are always the same, those will give you a quarter. Well, let's get to it then. Anything you're able to find, go ahead and bring it back to our lead medic. I'll let her know to look for you. 
Good luck out there. So, Rucker needs some medical information. And this can be at a number of medical type locations spread around the wasteland. There's a whole bunch of them, and she'll send you to a different one on different days. On this occasion, she's going to send us up to Brexton's Quality Medical Supplies, which is all the way over in the Maya. So, let's head over here. Already cleaned out all the bad guys, so let's head on inside and find this medical information for Rocca. Rather, for her medic, because we won't be turning it back into Rocca. So we head on inside. Somewhere inside there will be a terminal. In this case, it's right here. And on here, one of the entries will point us towards the information we need. Not that one. <laughs> this one. So there's a whole bunch of background. But ultimately, it's going to point us towards some surgical equipment plans. So, we'll do a quick 180 and run down the end. We'll find them up top here. So, this, as I say, can happen in a whole bunch of different locations, but the principle, always the same. So, uh, not too difficult. So, with that in hand, we can head back to the refuge. We'll just use the new UI element and travel directly there. Nice and easy. And we'll leg it over to the medics, who are not too far from where Sophie hangs out. The White Springs and we'll be able to turn this in. Don't to any so just around the corner here, we've got a little medical center. And there's our medic. Heard you were out there giving us a hand. Hope you got some good news about those surgical equipment plans. There we go. These plans are really detailed. With any luck, we'll be able to convince Skippy to help us put some of these together. I'll let Rucker know you came through for us. Best of luck out there. Thank you. So there we have it. That's our full set of Ultrasight Charge. So we could now launch an expedition if we want to. However, there's a couple of other things in the refuge to do first, at least on this first run through. And there's another alternative daily that I do want to show you first. So having a look at the pop up on the map here, you can now see we've got 100% charge. All the dailies are completed. And that's the option there to pick a new expedition should we want to. As I say, we'll get to that in just a minute. So, the last thing we need to do on this first run is go and talk to Skippy. Actually, it's not the last thing you need to do. It's more like the second to last, but anyway. So here's Skippy. He's from, come down from the pit and is representing the Union's interests in Appalachia. So again, you can talk to this guy, get a whole bunch more information about him and about the Union before you head out to the pit. That's right, looking for someone to help us take the fight to the fanatics. Surprised we got a taker, actually. You are interested, right? Uh, yep, yeah, again, we can explore a bit further if you want to, but first we're going to find out a little bit more about what we're doing. The Union's back's against the wall. Occasionally we win some small victories, but not a lot. Got a couple of situations back there right now where an extra hand might tip things in our favor, at least for now. I don't want to call it mercenary work, but I'm not going to lie. You'll be going there to fight. Fantastic. Let me just get Rucker in here. It's her bird, after all. Okay, so Skippy's going to zip off through the table. And we're going to wrap this bit up. We've met. Had a feeling you might be up for this when you came by earlier. Guess I was right. So there we go. Yet more information we can get about the responders and what's going on here. We'll skip on for now. I'll let you guys see that on your own time. Great. This means a lot to the Union. I'll make sure you're well rewarded for it. I might have some other things I need help with here in Appalachia, too. I'll let you know. So Skippy's now referring to the other Refuge Daily that will come up if you're not doing Code Blue. This is probably a good time to take a look at that one. So, skipping on a little bit later, we're going to have a look at the other Refuge Daily that Skippy will give us if you're getting one off him instead of off of Rucker. Now look at what the cat dragged in. Hope you're holding up well, sport. Could you use your help with something? So we'll find out what he needs. Uh, I knew I could count on you. We got lots of folks pouring in from the pit. But we need a way to steer them in the right direction. Where to find medical support. I guess you can see where this is going already. I thought, why not whip up a survival guide for them? So they know exactly what to expect. I need someone to be a diligent scout and go out and take photos and gather samples for me. Maybe you could be that scout. 
What do you say? So there we go. He wants to put together a survival guide for new refugees arriving from the pit, and he wants us to go out and find some samples and take some pictures. Now that's the spirit. I bet there's a union spark in you yet. Now I'll only be sending you to one region of Avalanche at a time, so you don't need to tire your legs out running around everywhere. If you need any pointers on where to find some of those plants, speak to Initiate Ellison. Boy's over eager, but he spent his whole life in Appalachia. He'll know where to find anything. No camera? No problem. Just come back to old Skippy. I might be able to scrounge something up for you. If you got any more questions, just swing back here. Good luck out there, Scout. So there we go. He wants a whole bunch of pictures taking and a sample of a plant grabbing as well. So if you haven't got the practical camera already, the ProSnap camera, then don't worry about going hunting all over Appalachia for it, because you don't need to do that anymore. Skippy will give you one. So if we hit the first option, Go ahead. I'm all here. we can ask him for a camera. You don't have one on you? Hmm. I think I got one to spare. Here you are. One camera served piping hot and broken. Now, uh, no need to get too curious or anything, but I maybe snagged this here camera off of a corpse. They had this list on their body of things to photograph. Maybe if you complete it, their ghost won't haunt you forever. Just a thought. <laughs> so there we go. We've got ourselves a camera, though it needs repairing. And we've also got the My Bucket List quest, which is the one you normally get when you find the camera as well. But sure Skippy's boys, doing the legwork for you and speeding that whole process up. Which is definitely a bit easier and dodges some RNG, so that's a win. So we're going to run downstairs to the White Springs Mall, head outside of the uh, instance refuge, and we can nip down here to where the workbenches are, and we'll be able to repair that camera, and also craft some film as well while we're at it. While we're here, a couple of new things have been added as well. We have currency vendors here now, so you can turn in your legendaries there on the left, or grab some gold bullion there on the right. Let's get this camera fixed. So there we go. Require some materials and a broken camera. There we go. We have a working camera. Let's grab some film while we're here. Nice. Obviously, if you've already got a camera, you don't need to do this bit. With that sorted out, we've actually been given a whole bunch of stuff that I can't do on this character because they want me to go and meet the raiders and go and photograph Meg. So what we're going to do is bounce onto another character and do the same task somewhere else on a different character. <laughs> so this time, I've got to harvest a soot flower. Take a photo of Bessie at the Wayward, photograph vendor bot Bob, and take a photo at Tyler County Fairgrounds ammo vending machine. So, the optional thing we got at the top there says ask Initiate Ellison for advice, and that's on where to find soot flowers. So Initiate Ellison is down here. As you can imagine, he is the Brotherhood's representative here. Not surprising given the settlers and the raiders have representatives here. Let's have a chat with him. Can I do anything for you? Absolutely. I mean, <clears throat> certainly, Knight Errant. What do you need? You need to find a soot flower. Soot flowers are these real pretty blue flowers. You won't go wrong looking in the forest. There's an old moonshiner shack that has quite a few growing around it. Hey, maybe you'll get a bit of moonshine out of it too. So there we go. It'll point us in the right direction. Glad I could help. Obviously, the locations vary depending on uh, luck out there. sort of random roll of which particular set of circumstances you get. They're usually quite close together, so you don't have to travel too much, they're all in the same region. But it can vary from day to day which region you might be in. So you see we've got to go to Flatwoods, we've got to go to the Wayward, we've got to go to Moonshine's Shack near Vault 76. And although it's not showing up here, because it's just off the map, we also have to go and see uh, Tyler County Fairgrounds. So here we are at the Moonshine's Shack. There's a soot flower. Grab that. That's one off the list. So let's head on to Tyler County Fairgrounds next and find this ammo vending machine. Here we are, there's Tyler County Fairground. And the ammo machine is actually at the other end of the fairground. It took me a while to find this one. Medical one's easy here, but the ammo one, a bit harder to find. There it is, tucked in the corner at the back. So we'll grab a quick picture of that. And we don't have to save it anymore if we don't want to, it will still progress the quest, even if we don't. So that's that done. Now we can head to the Wayward, take a picture of Bessie. And there she is. A sentry bot with no guns that thinks it's a cow. Break the camera out again. 
Come on, Bessie, stop turning your back on me. Nice, that's that one done. So last but not least, we need to find Vendorbot Bob. Now that would be this guy, the volunteer bot inside Flatwoods Church. Normally it's easier to tell which, bo which vendor bot you're looking for. That one's a bit awkward, but it's that guy. <laughs> the others are usually a bit clearer. So now we head back to Skippy and turn it all in. Excellent work as always, Sport. I knew I could count on you. Whenever you're ready and able, the Union could always use an extra hand on deck. So there we go. That is the other 50% daily. So as I say, you'll always have to work with Esme. You'll always have to turn some stuff into Sophie. And then you'll alternate between Skippy's daily and Ruckus daily. So the last thing we need to do on the first run before we can go on our first expedition is speak to Lennox. And this is just a one-off as well. So we'll head up to the roof where she is standing protectively over her pride and joy, the vertebird. There we go, up on the roof of the White Spring. This is where they have parked their vertebird. Whoa, hey, now you look interesting. What's up? She looks drunk. I'm <laughs> so we can get a whole load more information about Lennox and about the vertebird as well if we like to. One thing you can't actually do from here is launch the expedition, which is odd. To be honest, you'd think you'd have a conversation option for that, but she doesn't. But we do need to establish a little bit of uh, background detail here before we head on out. I'm ready when you are. Assuming you got the ultrasight battery cells for this beauty, I'll be here when you're ready to go. There we go. And now that we've completed this sort of lead-in, meet everybody set of objectives, we get a little reminder on how expeditions work. So, I think it's about time we had a look at our first expedition. We have all the dailies done, we have enough ultrasight battery charge, so let's launch a new expedition. And for now, we're going to start with the Union Jews. We'll have a look at From Ashes to Fire in just a minute. Let's have a look at this first one in the industrial district when we have to meet Hex. See, so here's a second one. A little different, slightly different mission, slightly different location, and we have a different contact as well. So, Union Juice, let's kick things off there. So, here we go. If you're doing this in a group, I imagine you'll see all of your groups sat in the uh, chairs back here. Probably a good idea to wait until they all load in so that everybody's ready to go. But if you're doing it solo, which is perfectly viable, as long as you're high enough level anyway, you wouldn't want to be doing this at uh, anything under an end game build. It is end game content after all. Then we're ready to roll. So let's hit the intercom and request a landing. Touching down. Yo, it's Tex. Glad to hear you're coming back. We could use your firepower again. We'll meet up when you land. So this particular character has actually done expeditions before, and I've switched on to my main as this character is actually tough enough to cope with the content. Now, the different enemies will scale to your level, so if you're a lower level, there's that, but resources and the time to kill will be really, really high on the enemies, because they're quite tough, so... Uh, it's definitely end-game content and definitely worth doing um, with a higher-level character if you've got one. Unless, of course, you've got uh, a group and some higher-level friends. So, first thing we need to do is meet our contact, Hex in this case, who is just here by the shop. Now, Hex will move around a bit depending on what the first objective you get is. We've got sort of three phases to each expedition's mission. So, phase one here, we will get from Hex when we meet her right now. There's a whole bunch of different possibilities that can come up here, at least three different missions, I think. This particular one will have us go to achieve a few objectives before going and meeting up with Hex again in a minute. Fit again? Well, we can use the help, so I won't complain. I was meeting an informant of ours in the area, only it, it didn't go so hot. My spy's dead, and I nearly bit the bullet with them. The fanatics have posted assassins all over town. They're out targeting me and our other leaders. Hunt them down and take them out. That <laughs> should let us move freely again. All right, I need to get moving. Give them hell and show no mercy. Let's talk again when you're through. Okay, so that's our first one. We have to explore the area, which is not huge. There is a secondary internal location that we'll get to in a bit. But for now, we're going to be on the outside area. The first objective usually is on the outside area. So we've got this one hunting down some fanatic manhunters. The other one I have seen involves defending a Union saboteur as it blows up uh, some fanatic supplies. But before we jump onto this first objective, I've hit a slight snag, which is actually quite convenient because it lets me show you something. 
And that is, I have not got a fusion core for my power armor. As we can see by the big flashy red light. So I'm going to need to bounce back to Appalachia and pick one up. Fortunately, we can do that with no problem whatsoever. Expeditions are not on a timer, so we don't need to worry about that. And you can always resume from the last checkpoint if you happen to want to return to Appalachia. So we'll open up the map and we can now see that everything's greyed out because we're not actually in Appalachia at the moment. Actually, it kind of makes those icons easier to see. It's not a bad feature. It'd be a good um, accessibility feature, actually, that if you could turn it on whenever you wanted. But as you can see here, we can leave the expedition, return to Appalachia and pick it up from where we left off. Of course, if you're the group leader and you're returning, then any team members with you will also get the boot from the expedition as well, and we'll have to rejoin. But, I've headed back to a camp, I've grabbed myself a fusion core, and now we can resume our expedition. Of course, I could start a new one if I had enough ultra side charge, but I don't, and I can still travel to the White Springs Refuge. But, what we want to do is resume this uh, expedition, so let's crack on. Here we go, back in the pit. Let's break out my power armor again. And we'll go and hunt down some fanatics. Here we are, eh, girl? New horizons. Nice. I'm going to get my gun out, and according to my compass pip down there, the first fanatic is somewhere in this direction. So you get a little look at how cool the streets look in Pittsburgh. Very different to Appalachia. Obviously, it still looks like Fallout 76, but... Still clearly a different environment, and it's pretty, pretty cool. So, tons of fanatics hanging out in the area. One of the really cool things about expeditions, actually, is if you happen to use a bunch of lunch boxes, that sort of thing, boost up your intelligence, stuff like that, it's a really easy way to farm a whole bunch of XP as well. Probably not quite as efficient as, say, Radiation Rumble is, but uh, easier to do at least once a day. And each one of these fanatics, as you see, is getting me 200 XP off the bat, and I've not even got any boosts on here. So if we crank up the uh, XP a little bit, you can definitely rack up some levels pretty quickly whilst doing expeditions. So let's make these fanatics leave me alone. We'll hop down here and find the Manhunter and take him out. There's the Manhunter. Let's do this. Here we go. One down. Two to go. <laughs> Just gotta find the second one. Here we go. This one actually wasn't too far away. Of course, he's got a whole bunch of friends with him, but... This is one of the reasons why I'd recommend being a decently high level. With a decent bit of power armor, I'm not taking too much damage. But uh, if I wasn't well equipped or was at a lower level, this might be getting a little hairy about now. Nice. So, last Manhunter is hanging out in this warehouse. Skipping over the running around looking for them part, as you can tell, but basically, follow your compass pip, they won't be that hard to find. And it gives you an opportunity to sort of explore the area a little bit as you progress as well. There we go, there's the elite one, the last one we need to take out. No, nope, he's dead, come on, there we go. This one's a bit stubborn. Got him. Those hunters are out of the picture. Good riddance. Head on over to our base in the pen and we can talk about what comes next. So there we go. First mission is always somewhere out and about in the front. Reasonably easy to do. Tends you to explore a certain amount of the area. One of them's often down that way as well. But our next objective is to head to the pen, which is the Union's base in this area. Well, how about that? You're still in one piece. Guards. Let him through. Okay, so this is the Union base. This is a key area. We'll be coming back here in a bit. And it's where Hex has retreated to. So we're going to need to go and meet her and get our next set of objectives. Here she is. Not the happiest lady around, but she does warm to you a bit over time. Glad you came back in one piece. You ready for the foundry then? The foundry. So this is the big main centre chunk of the expedition. Obviously... Hex has got a whole load more information for us if we want to explore it. Thought you'd never ask. Let's dive on into the mission. We have people on the inside telling us the fanatics are planning something big. If we can steal their detailed plans, that will be a big help in the coming fight. Get inside, find their safes, crack them open, and snatch those plans for me. 
So for Union Juice, the first part of the main section of this mission, this foundry section, involves finding some information. The nature of it changes a little bit, so do the locations. That's basically the gist of it. Heard he needed help with some things that he can't see to himself. Watch yourself in there. We'll hold the fort and make sure no surprises head your way. Good luck. So we also have the optional objectives as well, to it, for which we need to speak to Wicker. So both missions, uh, Union Jews and From Ashes to Fire, that we'll see in a minute, they have optional objectives in the middle section and the end section as well, I should say, that you need to complete in order to get the best result and therefore the best rewards at the end of the expedition. So here's Wicker. We're going to go and have a chat about what he needs. New Face is back. What's hanging, New Face? So, going into the foundry, what do you need? Well, as long as you're asking, grab me some steel ingots from around the foundry if you can. And pick up any stolen supplies you may run across inside. So there we go, we need steel ingots and a union supply cache. So the steel ingots look like this. And we will have quite a hard time finding them inside the foundry, they are quite well hidden. As we'll see in a minute, there are a few little things to make that a bit easier. Now, if you really want the best results, as I say, you need to make sure you're getting all of the optional objectives. And we'll take a look at some of the key points on that in a moment as well. But first up, we need to get into the foundry, which is accessed by this little railway tunnel down here. As usual, the compass will point you in the right direction. We have some people on the inside telling us the fanatics are planning something big. If we can steal their detailed plans, that will be a big help in the coming battles. Take a look for safes, crack them open, and snatch those plans for me. Okay, simple enough. We've got to find three safes and nab the plans out of them. We also have to collect five steel lingots and find the Union supply cache. Of course, the fanatics are none too keen on the idea of just leaving us to it, so uh, here we go. Well, oh, Fanatic's not as daft as they look. Let's take out a few of the bad guys. So, as we head on here, if you look at the compass, you can see I've got two pips on there. One is for the first safe. The second one means we've just got close to the steel ingots, or at least some of them. The first uh, batch. You see it pipping up there. And it looks like it's up top here. So let's hop up top. And there we go. When you're pretty close... Those compass markers will appear, so keep an eye out for those, because otherwise they are really difficult to find. As you may have just noticed, a little bunch of stuff on a table there is not going to be easy to spot and is easy to run past, so keep an eye on your compass is the advice there. And we'll keep moving on towards the first locked safe. And oh, look at that, we've just happened to stumble across another bunch. This normally does not go this smoothly. <laughs> But that definitely went quite well today. So the foundry is a pretty big internal space and it's quite the maze in here. So it's very, very easy to get lost. So take your time, wander around, hunt for all these stealing gots and explore and kind of learn your way about. You're not on the clock, so no rush. But uh, yeah, it's very easy to get lost in here and makes it very difficult to find those stealing gots sometimes. As we can see, I'm getting quite lucky here. I just seem to be stumbling across them quite easily, but uh, it does not always go that way. You may end up spending quite a long time wandering around this place looking for them. There, however, is our first safe. Unfortunately, we got company. Let's do something about that. Okay, so now we can crack this safe. I'll ignore the robot. He's not been able to do much to me. Now, I'll give this guy a whack before uh, we grab the plans and move on to the next safe. Once again, we have another compass pit pointing us in the right direction. Which is just as well, given that how huge and labyrinthine this place is. We'll deal with a few more bad guys, because they are standing right on top of the next safe. Which, as it turns out, is right here. Now, reminder, as usual, the locations of these safes, even if you get the same objective, i.e. find the safes, they will move around. They will not always be in the same place, and that will vary from occasion to occasion, which just means it's a bit more interesting to hunt around. 
and you may be required to find something different as opposed to these safes as well to just add a little bit more variety. Plenty of XP to be had here as well. So moving on a little bit, just over the sound of these bad guys, I hear a little pinging noise. Hear that noise? That tells you you're close to the Union supply cache that we need to pick up. There we go, it's just down there. It seems to usually be in the same place. I think it does move around and I've just gotten lucky. But uh, keep an ear out for that sound. Keep an eye on your compass pip. And you will be able to find the supplies. So that's that one done. We need one more steel lungo and one more safe. There's the safe. Some more running around later. Whoops. There we go. Got it. And now we have another objective. There we go. Seeing as we're here anyway, we've got a secondary objective. In this case, it involves destroying the Fanatics Chem Lab in the Foundry. Now, this one can change a little bit as well, but uh, it'll be in here while you're here anyway. I have a few ideas. There should be plenty of chemical contaminant lying around to pour into the weapon stockpile. The factory should also be storing sealing agent, which you can use to gum up the distribution station. And the workers there will have unstable mixtures you can add to the testing vat to ruin any R&D they have going. So there we go. Hex talking us through everything we need to do. So this chem lab is one of the more common things that pops up. It's down at uh, one particular end, not too far from when we first arrived in the foundry. So we need to get chemical contaminant, sealing agent, which is always in these uh, vault tech like supply containers. Let's take these guys out. There's a whole bunch of them trying to shoot me. And we also need to kill a bunch of these chemists who are in black hazmat suits because they also have stuff we need. There we go. There's the contaminant in those little boxes that look like that. Containers, rather. Unfortunately, I've been able to kill a whole bunch of chemists in quick succession, so if we use the area looting... There's four of the six things we need right there. So, we'll take out a few more guys, grab some more sealing agent and some contaminant. And if we head up here, there's a really good area to check for this stuff, because it seems to have a lot of spawn points for this sort of thing in it, and that's this corridor here. Once you can find it, you can see we've got a whole bunch of uh, spawn points for stuff here. That's got us well on the way. Let's so let's through. whack these last couple of chemists. There we go. That's some stable mixture. Now I've managed to grab everything I need. Let's start destroying the uh, Fanatics chemical production. So one in there. Big pipe that will look very familiar to anybody who's run a whole bunch of uh, nuke silos. Sabotage that one, and we'll just hop over the top here. A jetpack to good use. And now we can destroy this one as well. Jobs are good. Mess with us again anytime soon. You're a hero, pal. You brought us the time we need to regroup and live another day. Head on back to the pen for a debrief, but don't let your guard down. Never let your guard down. Sage advice. So before we head off, we still need one more steel lingot. Get back here as soon as you can. We've got another truck. Right on schedule. So there we go. If you're wondering where they are, they are about to make their appearance. Trogs everywhere in a moment. So let's whack this guy on the head and go and find the last steel ingot. Okay, so there we go. Got all the uh, friendly fanatics out of the way. Let's grab this last couple of ingots. Nice. Now we need to make our way out of the foundry, which... Uh, yeah, finding the exit can be a battle, but it's the way we came in, so uh, let's head over there. Okay, back outside. 
So, now we need to make our way back to the pen and uh, meet up with Wicker and with Hex again. But we've got Trogs outside now, so uh, watch your back. There's one. So there we go. With those out of the way, there's a key piece of information here that you need to know. We're about to run into the pen which is under attack from Trogs. There will be four people you have to keep alive, or three people you have to keep alive. So make sure you are fully prepped, because there is a boss in here who is reasonably tough, especially if you're on your own. So I'm going to repair my weapon, pop a couple of chems before I go in. And then we get to battle. There we go, bunch more trogs. As you can see, we've got a Union Fighter, Medic and Sniper we need to keep alive. If any of these guys die then you will not get the best results. So we need to kill a few trogs as quick as we can. And as soon as the boss makes an appearance, we need to take them down fast. If in doubt, get the boss as quickly as you can, because once the boss is dead, this particular phase is over. So if you're struggling because you're solo in particular, that is the key thing to do. Keep an eye on the health of these guys. They seem to be doing all right at the moment. Here's the boss. So there we go. Got him. Fortunately, everybody survived. First time I did this, I wasn't so lucky. But uh, we were being successful. Up next, stop. You do not want to speak to Hex until after you have spoken to Wicker. And the same principle will apply in the other expedition as well. Turn in your optional objectives before you talk to your main contact. Otherwise, you will fail them and you'll miss out. So, I think we've got all the trogs off the back. Let's go and talk to Wicker first. Hey. Uh, what can I do for you? Well, we've got some stuff for you. Thank you. You didn't have to go through with this after. So there we go, and we do it one more time to make sure we turn the supplies as well. Nice. And with that done, now we can go and talk to Hex to wrap things up. Thanks for your help again. You got here in the nick of time. You got business back in Appalachia, yeah? Yep, time to make an exit. Right. Hey, nice work today. Appalachia must have something good going for you to come out of there. Fly safe, and don't bring any of those things back with you. There we go. Nice and easy. So, last thing we have to do, head back over to the Vertibird and talk to Lennox to make our way home. Well, power armor, not strictly necessary at this point. In fact, I'd advise against it on the other mission, but uh, let's talk to Lennox and head home. You ready to get airborne? You bet. Hop in and I'll fire her up. And on our way back, we can take a look at our mission completion screen. There we go. Union dues done. And the secondary objectives collect all steel ingots, retrieve stone supplies, and protect all Union fighters. All successfully completed. So, we should have maximum rewards for this. As you can see, I've got about 10,000 XP for completion ish, nine and a half. And I've got five different legendaries, ten stamps, a legendary module, some ammo, and a stim pack, and we also get a unique plan. So if you're less successful, you get fewer stamps, fewer legendaries, and you also may not get the plan either. The plan, I should note, you will only get once per week. It's supposed to come from the same pool of things as you can buy from Giuseppe, who we'll have a look at in just a moment. But you only get one per week. The idea is to reduce the RNG a little bit, so you'll be spending these stamps that we've collected, which are a new currency, with Giuseppe, in order to claim various mods and items and rewards and the like. But, as I say, once per week you'll also get one of these. Always something you haven't learned, so you shouldn't get a duplicate from completing expeditions as well. It's just so that you can pick them up a little bit faster than relying on either just RNG or just by uh, gathering stamps. It's time that we head back to Appalachia. 
Okay, so we are outside Giuseppe's shop here. We're going to take this opportunity now we've picked a few stamps up to go and have a look at what we do with those. Seems like a sensible time to do this. So here's Giuseppe hanging out next to Bubbles. And the stamps we get from expeditions we can turn into Giuseppe in order to get different items. So let's have a quick look at his inventory here. So there we go. As you can see, we have a whole range of mods, a whole range of skins. Don't worry about the fact I've got 10,000 stamps right now. This is all test server footage, so they've maxed out everybody's stamps so that we can test things out. As soon as this goes live, I will not have 10,000 stamps. We'll be starting from scratch like everybody else. So you see we have mods for the autobags, we have some camp items, we have a few weapon skins available to buy, we have some more camp items and outfits, truck tube there, some banners, and we also have the mods for the Union Power Armor. Just a quick reminder, the Auto Rex and the Union Power Armor are currently available from Season 10, or they will be once the update goes live. Once Season 10 is over and done with, so after December, they'll be added to Giuseppe's shop as well. So if you don't get them during Season 10, you'll still be able to pick them up. You'll just have to do it for stamps. But other than that, all the other stuff that we can get for now is going into Giuseppe's store, and that's where you're going to pick it up for a variety of stamps. It is also worth mentioning that Bethesda do have plans on down the line to add new stuff into Giuseppe's store as well, so as we work our way through everything that we want to pick up, there'll be new things added on down the line as well. So, something to look forward to there too. So, that leaves us with the second expedition to take a look at. So, a day later, with all my refuge dailies done, as we did earlier, we have another 100% ultrasite battery charge, so let's head off to the pits and take a look at From Ashes to Fire. So, this is an entirely different mission in a different location with a different contact, and this one is a bit more grim than Union Jews is, and it has a slightly different vibe. This focuses more on the environment a little bit more, and it's quite cool in its own way. So, as before, we're further up from the uh, map venue. We'll hit the intercom and make a landing. Touching down. And Danilo, our contact, will get in touch. As you can see, he's a chirpy fellow. So here we go, in the kind of train yard here, just outside the trench. And this is, uh, yeah, a rough area. So we're going to head off and make contact with Danilo. He will move around a bit, as does Hex in the other mission, but uh, Danilo moves a little bit further. So there's three different locations he can be in, and this is one of them. So he wants us to help captives escape from the fanatics as they're being held in the sanctuary and being well broken into either slave labor or fanatics themselves. We're in the sanctum, a former Union safe house taken over by fanatics, but we need to make some preparations out here in the trench before we head inside. There's runoff waste constantly sinking into the chasm. It piles up and makes the paths dangerous, even falls and traps people. In short, you're on sewage duty today. Get in there and destroy any blockages you come across. And don't be surprised if something comes out of them. Okay, there we go. So Danilo has provided us with details of our first mission. As usual, there's a few different possibilities that can occur out here. Most of them will occur in this sort of front area, some here where the buildings are still intact, some a little bit further on in the trench proper, where things are a lot less um, well-preserved, shall we say. In this case, we are heading down into the trench and we have to find certain objects and, in this case, shoot them. So, this one's taking place in the Jackson's Noose area of uh, the trench. Wouldn't worry too much about the significance of that. Just follow your compass, Pip. You might have to find stored ingredients, much like we did in the last mission in uh, inside the foundry. Or you might have to destroy particular markers in and around the trench, in this case. So, we'll head forward through the destroyed buildings and into the trench proper. Got a few fanatics here who are going to try and interrupt us on our way. Much like with the first mission in Union Jews. Let's 
Okay, there we go. That's those guys whacked. So let's move on through. Welcome to the trench. <laughs> so the idea here is that the streets of Pittsburgh have basically collapsed post-war and the uh, ensuing trenches are pretty grim. And yeah, I think uh, Bethesda have pulled that off quite effectively. I was going to say nicely, but somehow that doesn't feel about right. However, just here we have our first objective. That big green pile of goop that we need to destroy right there. <laughs> there, let's clobber that red roach. And we'll destroy this one. And we've got eight of these to take out, so that they don't uh, hamper people moving around the area. As I say, there's all manner of similar things that can go on down here that you need to do. It basically involves exploring the trench, finding the particular objects or markers you need to hit, and either interacting with or destroying them. In this case, destroying. There's a whole bunch of them clustered nice and close together. Do watch out for the trogs, though. They apparently have a bit of a problem with that. There's a lot more trogs in From Ashes to Fire than there is in Union Jews. Once again, though, decent opportunity to grab some XP. That's more waste. And we're off in the wrong direction here. We'll double back on ourselves a little bit. Here's the last one here. We've got three more to find further on in the trench. One less trog is always a good thing. So there we go, there's another one. The last couple here are right outside our next destination. So we'll get rid of the last few trogs that apparently have a problem with us. They do kind of gang up on you, these guys, sometimes. There we go. Right in front of us is the last pile of chemical waste we need to destroy. Sorted. And now we need to head on to the outpost. Check in with me at the outpost before you head underground. Once you enter those tunnels, there's no turning back. Not technically true, but uh, still. We do need to check in with them here at the outpost to start the next phase. Much like we did in... Union Jews. So here we go. We're in the caves at the back of the trench. And there's Danilo. He has moved down here. Of course. Of course. Hello, Morley. Prepare now before we head underground. There won't be any more chances to catch your breath. So yeah, the next section will be taking us underground into the Sanctum. So we've got a whole lot more stuff that we can get out of Danilo here. But we're going to push on. Fairly simple. Remember to talk to Ava if you want to do extra. So there we go. We have sort of two areas on our way to the Sanctum. There's a series of objectives in the first one, and then we move on to the Sanctum proper. But we need to get our extra objectives as well from this time from Ava Rose. So you can see there's two missions for us. Oh, not for me, but for the fallen. Take their tracking collars and bring them to me. I will learn their names and lay the poor dears to rest. So there we go. Task number one, find the tracking collars from fallen prisoners. Bless you. Bring me what you can, and we will say our farewells. Uh, mission number two involves the fanatics directly. A little more directly, anyway. I believe they are suffering. They think themselves beyond salvation, so they march ever deeper into perdition. I've spoken to others, given them gifts, scarves of pure white. They may yet be convinced it is not too late. If only, if only I could... <coughs> God be with you, child. So there we go. Second objective is to find a fanatic skeptic and persuade them to leave the fanatics while they still can. So first thing you need to be aware of, check your quest log in the top right there before you go anywhere else, because sometimes the fanatic skeptic might be out here in the trench. And you'll make life a lot easier for yourself if you go and find them first, if that is the case. In this case, 
they're in the sanctum, so it's fine. But if they're out in the trench, it will tell you. So make sure you catch that particular point because, uh, yeah, it makes life easy to do that first if they're out here. But seeing as that's not the case today, we're going to head straight in to the tunnels. So there's one of the two entrances. This is the nearest one. And it takes us down into the catacombs underneath the sanctum. The sanctum's big old cathedral, and these are the, um, well, fake <laughs> catacombs underneath, apparently. Built as a tourist attraction rather late on, apparently. But uh, I can't imagine they're getting a lot of tourists now. This place is none too friendly. So let's head on into the catacombs and get cracking on these missions. So this area here, the catacombs area, has kind of got two separate sections. One that's more built up like this, one that's a bit more cave-like. So yeah, our first objective happens down here in the catacombs, um, and here is the first part of our side objective, to find prisoners' collars. So that one's not too bad. The other four are going to be a bit more tricky. So the objectives can vary, and their location can vary in and around these tunnels, which is where the first one will be. In this case, we're going to use Danilo's stash to grab some troclocide, and this stuff is so heavy it stops us running, so be aware of that. Fortunately, Trognest is not too far away, and we can throw it like a grenade, straight down the hole. Job's a good one. One down, two to go. So as we nip through the tunnels here, there's the next stash. But I'm going to take out these trogs first, because otherwise they'll be wailing on me while I'm trying to lob the trogler side down into their nest. Which is just down that corridor there. Set that guy so he doesn't come up behind me. Right, another bit of trogler side. Easier to do this if you just point at the coffin rather than the troggle side itself. I don't know why, but it is. So let's lob that down there. Whack these guys. Nice. And one more to do. This is a little bit deceptive, because there's a few places you can pick things up, and it kind of pointed me further away from where I need to be, but... Uh, not that way. <laughs> These stashes are all over the place, and there is actually one that's a bit nearer to the trog nest, so this was not the best choice of a stash to use, but hey, it works. So we'll make our way back in the opposite direction this time, and the nest is just a bit further down. So the nests I don't think move around too much, but the stashes can a little bit, and the objective can change entirely, but it, the first one will usually take place down here in the catacombs. So there we go, lob that down there. And with the nest destroyed, now we meet, uh, meet up with Danilo again. But first, we're going to move on to the side objectives before we do that. Now I've got these trogs off me. So finding fallen prisoners collars. Most of them are usually scattered around down here in the tunnels. Uh, they can be very hard to find, though. Sometimes they're right out in the open, like that body was there, although not the one we need. Sometimes they are considerably more difficult to spot. But, as with Union Jews, you will get an indicator on your compass when you are nearby. Although, don't confuse it with the one that's already on there, which will point us to Danilo. So, we're down into a kind of sewage system here, on the edge of the tunnels, and there is our first body. Let's just try to leave me alone. Oh, and he's bringing company. Wonderful. There we go. Let's grab our second collar off this guy. Nice. And we'll keep on exploring. There are some grim things down here, just to forewarn you. So we'll get rid of that tripwire. And fortunately, in this room here, there's actually a whole bunch of them. We'll open up this fridge. <laughs> here we go. We have a lift off. There's one of the fallen prisoners. This one's been nailed into a bath, apparently. Grim way to go. And we need one more. 
Now, it is possible that one of these collars will be found upstairs in the main sanctum. So if you're really having a hard time finding it down here and you're not having any luck, then you can search up in the main church that we'll head to in a moment. Uh, you can always come back and explore down here later. But in this case, the last one is actually down here as well, and it's inside one of the walls. There are a few places down here where prisoners have been sealed up inside the walls like that, and they can be places to find those collars, so be aware they can be quite difficult to find on occasion. But, as always, no timer, so you can hunt around at your leisure. So now we know which objective we have inside the church. There's a pipe organ on the upper floor of the cathedral. It has some pre-recorded hymns. Playing that music suddenly should create chaos, enough to give some captives an opportunity to escape. Once you start the music, hold the floor for as long as you can, keeping it clear of fanatics. Remember, suicide path straight ahead, stealth route to the right. You know the rest. I'm unlocking the gate. See you again topside. There we go. So Danilo is not joining us for this mission. There is another one that I have done that he does join us for, which involves defending him. In this case, we're going to need to enter the cathedral, find an organ, and stand and defend it while it plays some pre-recorded tunes. And uh, shoot a whole bunch of fanatics. Not sure what Dinello is doing here, apparently that's where he's running off to. We'll head upstairs into the Sanctum proper. So, first thing we're going to note here is on the compass has popped up the fanatic skeptic we need to find, who is in the Sanctum here. Turns out they're up there, so we'll get to them in just a moment. Once we're done getting shot in the back. So we'll head through into the main part of the church. We've got a few fanatics hanging out here. So we might as well take these guys out while we're here. So with these guys out of the way, you can see the organ up top there. That's what we need to get to in order to start the objective. Let's deal with this big tough guy up there. And here's one of the two staircases. There's one on each side. Let's head up top and get to this organ. So there we go. We now have access to it. Clean out these last few fanatics. We're going to try and shoot me in the back. And we can also get at the fanatic skeptic while we're here. So we might as well hit that particular uh, objective while we can before we forget. Deal with the robot. Uh, this one's sneaking up on me as well. Great. Yeah, we're good. And there is our skeptic. Now, I've hit a slight snag here, although it actually has a certain advantage for the purposes of this video as well. Upon talking to the skeptic, who will always be wearing a white bandana like that, you notice to progress, I have two stat checks that we have to pass, either perception or endurance. I can't pass either one, because neither on this character, my with my current build, neither my perception nor my endurance are high enough. There are other combinations of stat checks that come up, so you may have better luck on other occasions, but on this occasion, I'm not actually going to be able to persuade this particular individual. So I guess I'm going to have to leave him there for the moment, and we'll go and defend the organ. But it means we get a chance to look at what happens if you don't achieve all of the objectives uh, when we come to the end of the mission. So, we'll activate the organ, and we'll stand up here and wipe out the fanatics. Now you see it says in the top right there, four enemies in the area. Well, apparently we're down to three now, not sure how that happened. But... The progress bar underneath will only move when there are no enemies in the area. So you have to take them out, let the progress bar come on. When the next load come in, take those out, and then the progress bar will continue. And we're going to jump up here and just blast away at them. So they're not all that bright. Let's bounce a grenade off the wall there. No idea if I hit anybody, but still... It can be a little hard to spot sometimes. You can always head downstairs like this. Although, generally, if you've got a decent bit of range, I do find it easier to stay up the top because it makes them harder to uh, 
makes it harder for the fanatics to find you and makes it harder for them to get at you too so We're at zero, and you can see that progress bar going up now. So let's jump on a little bit, shall we? Because I think you get the general idea. Whack a few more. Still got four more to take out. Out. One left, somewhere down here, hiding, I think. Yep. Got him. So now that progress car will start up again. But moving swiftly on. There we go. Mission accomplished. Got a new Prepare for so, to wrap things up, we have a boss fight. However, there's one thing I do want to check on the way out. Let's go back to this fanatic skeptic a moment that we didn't have any luck with just before. What, what happens if I do attack them? What, what do you mean? Shit, I really will kill you. Whoa, right uh, we failed, it would seem, as we see on the pop-up there. Attacking them does in fact fail the objective, so that's always good to know about. But we need to take out the boss, who is actually just down here near where we came in. Through those double doors. As we get a bit closer, here they come, and they're not too tough, to be honest. The only thing to note is that this is actually a two-part fight. I say a la Dark Souls, but uh, that might be overstating it a little bit. <laughs> Clubber the ads, go back to shooting the foreman. He drops to one knee. And now we can restart again. Yep, yeah, there's some more ads down, and there goes the boss. Nice. So now, we can make an exit. As mentioned before, if you haven't found all of the optional objectives, including some of the prisoner collars, this is a good opportunity to have a hunt around up here, because uh, it's all peaceful. But in the meantime, as we've got everything, let's head on our way out. And coming up... On our way here is uh, a shortcut that we couldn't get back through before, but it will take us back into the catacombs. So again, if you can't find the people you're looking for up top, you can have another look down here. But we're all good, so let's head out. Now here, there's one thing I do want to point out before we leave the Sanctum, and that is, although this doesn't have a timer, it's about to get as close to being timed as you're going to get, because we have to find three survivors that are trapped in the trench when we're out there. And we have to get to them quickly before they die. So there's three of them. There's a tough one, a medium one, and a weak one. And obviously they die at relative speeds to each other. So not technically timed, but this particular objective does have to be done very quickly. So uh, be aware of that before you leave the Sanctum. You want to be ready to run as fast as you can for this last section. Power on is a good bet because it's going to be highly irradiated as well. So let's push on and do this bit. There we go, so we've got a feeble, middling, and a resilient survivor. I strongly suggest ignoring the trogs and just running like hell until you find the survivors, because as you can see, their health bars are dropping pretty rapidly. Um, and if you're unlucky or you take too long about it, you will fail, and you need to save them all to get the best outcome. If you're really lucky, you'll find the feeble one first. It is a bit RNG because they do change their locations, they move around a bit in the trench and in the area up top on the other side of it, closer to where we arrived. As it turns out, one of them's up here in the back of this truck. Or train, or whatever the heck it is. And we're in luck, that's the feeble one. So that's the one we really wanted to find first. And uh, it looks like they are the other direction. Yep, because we want the little circles, not the uh, direct compass bit. So we'll leg it on down here, 
And from the look of things, I actually ran past the middling survivor, because they are hanging out right here. So that's them saved. Now we just have to find the resilient one. And this is actually going quite well this time. <laughs> As I say, I would just run and ignore the trogs, because you really don't have time to stand and fight. It's not so bad if you're in a group, because you can split up and find them quicker, but... If you're on your own, you really gotta run. Funnily enough, there's a resilient survivor looking awfully like they should be the least resilient survivor, but nonetheless, you can now whack a few trogs, grab a bit more XP if you so desire. Well, squish that one. And now. We need to, as with Union Jews, return to Ava Rose before we go back to Danilo. Otherwise, again, we'll miss out on the optional objectives. So here we are, back at the outpost where we picked up the quest from Ava Rose before. And as usual, a bunch of trogs decided to follow me. So let's make sure they go away because, to be honest, the Union fighters around here aren't going to hold them off, are they? So there we go, back round to Ava Rose. And now we can turn in at least the colours, because unfortunately we didn't have a whole lot of luck with the Fanatic Skeptic. <laughs> the names on these colours. I will remember them well. Okay, so let's make an exit. God be with you, child. And now we head back to the Vertibird and go and speak to Danilo, who will be standing right beside it. Let's just save Morley first, though. We can't leave the dog to uh, fend for himself. So here we go. Back up very close to where we started. This is where we met Danilo the first time. Let's just take out any trogs who might be following me, because they will come out and interrupt your conversation with Danilo if you don't take them out first. So worth making sure you haven't got any too close to your back when you head in here. There we go. There's the vertebrate. There's Danilo. Let's turn it all in. Well, for one of the best rewards, I kind of did need to do it, really. If you come back, I'll be glad to work with you again. If not, that's probably best for you. Safe travels. Well, for Danilo, that's practically chirpy. So, we'll all that out of the way. Let's speak to Lennox, make our exit, and uh, see how we did. I think hopping out of the power armor might have been a bad move right now. You ready to get airborne? Hop in and I'll fire her up. Okay, there we go. So, on our way back to Appalachia, let's see how we did. So there we go. We didn't manage to persuade the fanatic skeptic, but we did manage to complete from ashes to fire, collect the tracking collars, and rescue all survivors from the storm. Pity about that one missed objective. We can see the impact here, though. Hasn't really affected the XP we get, but we got slightly less on the... Legendary options, and we got fewer stamps as well. Obviously, not getting a plan here because I've already had one for the week anyway. So, everything else is as we'd expect, apart from the stamps, and we would like a couple of extra legendaries. But if you don't pull off all of the objectives, you don't get all the rewards. So, there we go. That, in a nutshell, is Expeditions. A very, very large nutshell, but uh, you know, that's how it goes. So, as I said before, there are different missions available, different objectives available, and they do move around across the various missions. That applies to both the refuge dailies we have to do to launch the expeditions, and the expeditions missions themselves. So, hence, obviously, you guys can already see how long this video is running. This is why I can't show you every single variation, but... The information you've just gotten from this video should give you a solid foundation to head out there, tackle the expeditions, and at least work out where you need to go and what you need to do from the information that it will give you without being too lost, I hope. So there we go. I hope you folks have found this useful and informative and uh, have a reasonably good basis to start your expeditions from. If you did like the video, please do consider dropping subs and likes. I do very, very much appreciate it. And down below the video as well, we've got channel memberships, merch store, social media links, all that good stuff. If you're interested in supporting the channel that way, I very, very much appreciate it. Really, really helps out. So huge thanks to everybody who's done that as well. 
And if you get the chance, do join us for live streams as well, as we will, of course, be playing Fallout 76 and tackling expeditions, as well as the new season. And, of course, playing on with a few other bits and pieces as well. So, on that note, I will say a thank you very much for watching, and I look forward to speaking to you all very, very soon.